to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. Today is June 18th, and I'm uh, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Um, I'm glad that we're back together after uh, uh, a few weeks that I wasn't able to broadcast. Obviously, last Thursday was my first broadcast after a few weeks. And... Um, we have this one, and I'm going to do it again next week before I go to Ore uh, to do my fourth annual retreat of Fifth Dimensional Quantum Healing Training Program. Um, those of you who are new with me, I would like to welcome you if it's your first time. Uh, we have to, uh, the ones who connect with me through uh, uh, our system Zoom, just want to share this with you that I have to mute all the devices because they're making funny noises. And then what you can do is you can write on the chat box uh, your message if you like me to answer your question. And after the meditation, we'll get into that. And uh, those of you who are connecting with me via Facebook or Instagram, I'm not able to communicate with you. I'm sorry because it's just too much and we have too little time. So... And the ones on uh, my system, if you're not going to write anything on chat box, you can just simply wave at me and I'll just uh, unmute you and I'll talk to you. Oh, hi. Uh, Pragaya. Hi, nice to see you. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So we're going to do a simple meditation. Just simply sink back inside yourself. Take a moment, take a deep breath and relax. And simply bring your attention inwards and focus your attention at where you can hear me from. Bring your attention to the observer. Bring your attention to the one who is aware, but not what you're aware of. Simply, you bring your attention towards your own source. You bring your attention to the I am. And that's all you need to do. And uh, if it's effort, then I would have to say, if you're putting an effort into it, then you're not doing it correctly. It must be effortless and very easy. So you're simply diverting your attention to the source of yourself. And all of a sudden, you realize that your mind's quiet and there's no noise. So go ahead and do that. Bring your attention inwards to the source. Take a deep breath. And just relax into this moment. You don't need to do any kind of mantras. You don't have to do any kind of breath work. You simply bring your attention towards the source, the source of yourself, the I am. And you relax into that. You relax into this moment. Just simply keep your attention on the I am, on yourself, not what you're thinking or how you're feeling. Simply keep your attention on the source.
Simply stay in this moment and bring your attention on the observer, not what is being observed. Stay in this place that you're at. Suspended in the space. Aimless. Without having an agenda, you're not trying to get anywhere and accomplish anything. You're simply here without any goals.
Nice. Slowly, slowly come back. Yeah. Medi <clears throat> meditation um, doesn't have to be um, a chore. It could be done in 10 minutes. Uh, basically, if you're doing it in this form, and simply you disengage from the world, including what is going on inside yourself whatever is the story and you just take take a few minutes five ten minutes and you bring your divert your intention your attention back to the source of yourself as easy as that and then without an, an agenda it's really important that when you're doing this, you don't have a goal. Of course, you're doing this meditation, this work, in order to center yourself, to come back to yourself, in a way to come back to your senses, coming back to the presence of this moment. And which is, this moment when you sink back into it and you come back to yourself is an independent moment from the past and it's completely independent from anything in the future this moment is the only moment has ever happened it's the only moment happening and will never repeat itself and it only happens once in the entire existence in the entire history of humanity this moment only happens one time and then it's over and then the next moment happens and the same thing it's over and in this moment when it's happening it doesn't have a story so this moment doesn't care about what happened in your past to you like you were a girl you were a boy and you grew up and you've been heartbroken or you've gone through some divorces or you've gone through pregnancies or you've gone through failure or whatever has happened you had a surgery and now you're on medication and whatever the story that you have you carry the moment when it's happening like right now it doesn't really care about your story the story that you have is simply its memory it's stored in the memory bank of your brain and you refer to it as your story as your life but the present moment it doesn't carry any stories so if you sink back into this moment and not even attaching any kind of agendas to it like you're trying to meditate you're trying to find inner peace uh, you're tr you're looking for freedom you want to awaken you're looking for liberation whatever or you're doing this because you want to attract your soulmate what, whatever is your goal so 
it doesn't it doesn't really matter what the story is it's still a purpose it's still something you're trying to get to you're trying to achieve something but what i'm referring to is when you're sinking into this moment here you're simply here and you bring your attention inwards and you bring your attention to the observer which is you the i am and you don't have an agenda there's no purpose you're not trying to accomplish anything so that is that pressure is also not there you've eliminated the pressure and also you're not projecting that in the future you're going to be calm or you're going to be liberated or you're going to be awakened so you've taken that projection out of the equation and you're simply hanging out in this moment and then all of a sudden the expansion happens because you find yourself simply suspended it's like a a debris or you know sometimes when you're dusting you see these debris in the air and it's like a debris debris is just hanging out in a space but it's not planning on going anywhere or accomplish anything it's just suspended in the space and that's what i'm referring to by this practice we do this work we do because i want to convey that to you so maybe you understand it and you catch it so you understand that the meditation and the work we do is really not about to get to somewhere it's actually it's the in the absence of trying to get anywhere it's basically rec recognizing the space that is already here in that recognition recognition of what is already present in this moment and if there is the goal if we're trying to get anywhere to do to something then this is what that thing is that actually you can get to it from not trying it's the counterintuitive to whatever you've been taught all of your life is that you have to put effort and try to get somewhere to accomplish something to get a degree in law in medicine to get a certificate a certificate of completion to a course you've taken whatever that is or you're trying to get your driver license um you know whatever you're working on to accomplish something and you get something in return and this is counterintuitive to that because you're not trying to get anywhere you're trying the you only thing we're trying to point out to to recognize who we already are recognition of ourselves and what is it you have to do to get to yourself what's there to do you don't have to try and do anything to be yourself that's completely effortless but because we've been conditioned throughout our lives and thousands of years of conditioning uh, of human mind and our upbringing in this society is that there's constant um, there's this lack of patience that's been built inside us and there's this level of anxiety and this kind of anticipation of anticipating the next thing 
or it's either someplace else that you need to get to or some other time. Postponement, postponing what is already here and available to a future time. So what happens is basically it creates suffering and it makes you suffer because you're depriving yourself from your very inherent, um, what you've been inherited by being born in this life. And that is pure presence and simply being here and being suspended in, in the space. Because the I am, it doesn't need any kind of evolving. The truth of who you are, your soul, your higher self, the presence within you, your life force, it doesn't need to evolve and it doesn't need to get anywhere because it's already complete and it's perfect and it's whole. So, so the I am doesn't have an agenda. It's not trying to accomplish anything. It's complete. And that's the source of you. That's who you really are. So, and the reason that you don't feel it or you don't live it is very simple. It's because you've been conditioned all of your life to project a perfect you, a different version of yourself into the future. And that future you that you're projecting into it, it's a version of your the past of you without the fears or anxieties and the imperfection that you're seeing yourself to be. So you're projecting that into the future. So this game continues being played all the time and you're not even aware of it. You're not aware of it, that you're completely missing the point. And of course, since if you don't know how to be here, that's never going to happen because all of your life you're going to be using the past and projecting it through the apparatus that you have, the I am, instead of the focus being on the I am, the focus is on a projected future or a projected self of yourself to be, to become. So this thing is being projected continuously out of you. And of course, it's never good enough. And it's never going to be that because the attention is on the wrong place. So now you start to, to try to fix the image. Your attention goes on trying to fix the projection of the image, the movie that you're watching, you're trying to fix the movie. So your attention goes on a wrong place and that, that is impossible, it's not gonna be fixed and it doesn't matter what you do. It's always going to bring you back to dissatisfaction and brings you to suffering. While the entire ordeal is very simple, of course, if you don't know, you don't know. But when you come to the teaching, this teaching is all about direct experience. So the direct experience of yourself, of, of your own being. Any other teachings that it's not taking you into a direct experience is a form of postponement. It's going to be working on something related to the past. It's not dealing with direct experience.
any, any other kind of teachings. Whatever way you go, which is not dealing with direct experience, is going to put you into a loop. It's as simple as that. So you, if you want to get home and be done with the deal, you have to take the direct way, direct experience of the self, coming straight to the source and, and identifying with the truth of who you are, not what you think you are. And when you do that, the results are almost immediate because when you have a direct experience of the self, it immediately activates everything in your etheric body, in your physical body, your emotional body, everything gets activated immediately. And what it does is it immediately touches your heart. And what happens is you go into silence, immediately everything becomes quiet. The moment you bring your attention inwards and you look for the source, everything becomes quiet. Now, you may not be able to stay there, sustain it, because your attention goes back into your thoughts. You're, you're, you get identified with the thoughts. So maybe it's momentarily for a minute or 30 seconds, you go, your attention goes inward and you go into deep silence and you get the comfort and your heart opens and then you're in this place and then unconsciously you get identified with your thought patterns and you get identified with your emotions and then you come out of it so you're not staying in this place long term but what you want to do is you want to just when you become aware of it you want to bring your attention back inwards again to this place and just simply stay focused on on this point And a part of that is you want to basically have no goals and not trying to accomplish anything or getting anywhere. Because this moment doesn't have any stories. And when you're connecting back to the source of who you are, it's, it's perfect. You don't need to work on it. There's no work being done. It's completely silent, it's still at this place. It's not identifying with the pendulum of the ups and downs, of the emotional ups and downs. It's where you can see the emotional ups and downs, but you're not identified with it. You're simply still. And it's complete. And the byproduct of it, or part of it, is that the moment you come back to this place, all of a sudden your heart opens up. And what you experience is you get a glimpse of who you are, which is pure presence and pure love the heart, or you can call it the bliss. You experience and you start to touch who you really are, pure bliss, pure being. And it's unconditional. It's not subject to any kind of conditions that you need to do this or you need to do that or you need to be vegetarian or you need to dress in a certain way or 
you have to change your diet or whatever it 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 has no conditions and that's the direct experience when you bring your attention inwards now when you start touching this place and you become familiar with it and that's you know how you can just establish in this place yourself and and stay in the center there are ways to do it of course you have to pay attention and you have to be active about it and really want to stop suffering it does require somebody who is willing to be focused and is sick and tired of what's been happening to you in the past and it requires that willingness and you're willing to let go you're really at a place in your life that that you are ready to let go of your story and the story first your own story of your life whatever that is and secondly the story of life even the past history of whatever it is which is very difficult for many people to do that's why not too many people are able to come to a full realization place because of the addiction that most of us have to our own life story not willing to let it go poor me this has happened to me i got this issue i got that issue blah 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 and also not letting go of the world the story of the world whatever it is of the story of it and a willingness of living in this uncertainty of being okay with not knowing what's going to happen in the future which a lot of people have a really hard time with that because because the conditioned mind is so rooted into control that i have to know what's going to happen oh zaratustra i'm going to come to your healing training program what's going to happen uh, Zaratustra, I'm going to take a third eye activation uh, course with you. When is my third eye going to open up? Uh, how long would it take? What can I do with it? Again, there's this thing of wanting to control and wanting to know something into the future. Wanting to know the future, which is the mind because the the one who's liberated and has become free from this illusion of of this mind that keeps you in this captivity it keeps you into this prison that most human beings are not even aware of it that they are in this golden prison and it doesn't matter how great your life is your life is good or your life is bad you're going to horror story or your your a lot of things happen or you think you're manifesting a lot of stuff in your life it doesn't matter you know it has nothing to do with a good life or bad life you're still stuck into the matrix in this projected imaginary thing that the mind is creating and it's also creating this thing this body that you have is also a product of it and your life your story everything is created by by the mind projecting it projecting you and what is happening to you all of it is a part of it of its projection so in this projection that it starts to create it, it creates time and space because it needs time space for it to happen 
So now you're trying to fix something in that, but that doesn't work. So what it happens is it always makes you dissatisfied and it brings misery of some sort. And then you're trying to control it. It won't work. And no one's ever been able to do it because it's just not there. Until you start to come to this understanding that there has to be something beyond that. So, and then till the attention from projecting the attention is, is continuously on the outside. And what I'm talking about the outside is I'm also including the thoughts, your thoughts and your emotions and your body. So the attention is continuously on these things. Your thoughts are also are, are outside. They're objects traveling through your mind. That's why you can see them and you be aware of them because they're not a part of who you are. There's something is traveling in front of you. That's why you can know them. That's why you can see your thoughts. You can be aware of them. In the beginning, this may sound a little bit weird if you're hearing this for the first time. But if you start getting into a practice of observing your thoughts, in some schools they call it mindfulness. So then you start to separate yourself from your thoughts. And you're starting to see that there's a you here and there's something passing in front of it, which is your thoughts. So they're being objects too. And the same thing with your passing emotions. All these ups and downs you're going through, you can easily, once you start to understand this teaching and you become attentive to it, you have to become attentive to it. Because I don't really have a magic pill. I can't give you a magic pill and all, all the problems are gone. You have to get attentive and focus on it. But then what happens is you start to see that these are objects too. So all of these objects are passing, including your life, the people come to your life, people who leave your life, your loved ones, your children, your parents, the government, the system, the economy, everything becomes a moving object. Traveling in front of you. Traveling in front of the I am. I am here watching all these things. So you have to make that the practice by bringing your attention on the I am. And the more you do that, the more you start seeing the objects. So the more you start to separate yourself from it and it becomes obvious. It starts to lose its grip. It starts to lose its texture of how real it is. You start to see that, okay, this life that I've been living in, this reality that I believe is real, it starts to have cracks into it. And you start to see that it's not really real. But until you get to that point, you have to do your work. You have to stay very adamant and keep bringing your attention to the I am and staying at it, which does require attention. I'm going to check. I have some messages here. Let's go through them. Uh, you want to read them to me? Um, 
Is she? She's just saying hello. I okay. Good morning, Zoro from El Has, and then from Catherine. Hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Important <laughs> question. Okay. Yeah. Can you check my Facebook? I think Rosalie wrote a message to us. She had a question on Facebook. If you check that out. Yeah, is that? Yeah. Rosalie, did you write to me a few days ago? You had a question or you wanted me to talk about something? Was it? I guess, I guess we talked about that last time. Yeah, what was it? I'm sorry, I don't remember. <laughs> it can't be very important. That okay. was about be, be in love with the soul and be in love with the person. Right. Okay, so what was the being in love with the soul and being in love with a person? Yeah, what's the difference was? Okay. Yeah, that was we talked about last time. Right, right. What's that? I think that to uh, many, many, they think that love is sex, but it's nothing to do with sex. I mean, love is not sex. Okay, so, all right, we're talking about different things. Okay. Yeah, because when people say, when you say to a person, you love me uh, or I love you, then they misunderstand you and they think they want you in bed. Right. That's so the way you're talking, about, you're talking about the opposites. You're not talking about yeah. father and son or two, no. two girlfriends or... You're talking no. about the opposite sexes. Yeah. Right. For, for when, when you tell people, I used to say, I love you. Right. And then you get the message back, can I meet you? Can, can we sleep together? I okay. mean, that's not love for me. <laughs> right. Then I'd be very busy. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. <laughs> so, uh, huh. I love you is different from me in love. Right. I mean, of course, there's different way of loving someone and there's different way of expressing your love. And uh, it depends how you really express it and to who you express it. And um, the body gestures and the body language, it... It can, uh, it depends how you express yourself, I guess. So. Hi, Mel Hi, Melena. Let's see, I'm trying to get you unmuted. What's going on here? Can you do it? What's your name, Elena? Has no. Oh yeah. Okay, we got you. I can't. I can't hear you. You're. We got you. Let's Which see. One? L has. Yeah. No. Oh. No. No. Oh. Yeah. Hi. I have her unmuted, but I can't hear you. Do you want to write to me? Do you want to write to me? No. Okay. Okay, so dear Zara, Zara, um, Zaratustra, by the way, thank you for calling me Zara, but I prefer Zaratustra. Uh, how can I change my wavelength immediately? Okay, El, 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 El Hez, is that right? Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Let me see, where are you? Okay, there you are. Hi, uh, El, El Hez, do you wanna, 
do you want to talk to me? Can you oh, hear yes. me? Do you yeah. hear me? Oh, yeah, okay. I, I didn't know. Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for uh, um, accepting my question. <laughs> uh, Zara, um, I myself, uh, I was a healer uh, uh, since uh, t more than 20 years ago. And then uh, the past 10 years, I went through a lot, which um, you helped me a lot a few years ago, at least to make me alive again. And I always appreciate you. The, the, you said three years ago? No, a few years ago. Where, where did we meet? I think it was maybe more than five, six years ago on Olympic Collection. Okay, okay. And I always appreciate you. I think there was something which someone put in me. I don't know what it was. Well, there, it was many. But anyway, uh, thanks God. Now at least I'm healthy. Uh, knock on the wood, good. Now the thing is, for the past 10 years, I was unable to work. And uh, okay. whatever I was doing, it wasn't. Now, I, what I'm looking for, I need my 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 mind my brain a shake to 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 align myself uh with the divine light uh, so i can do a manifest like before uh just automatically okay uh, if you can help me and i think uh now it's the time and maybe there was a time which i could change a lot of things but it was not the time and maybe that's why i went through all this but now i think uh, it is the time so okay well let me get clear so what is your uh request or your question uh if you can help me to shake my uh, my uh my brain wavelength and to align it to align it with the divine or how very okay. much well, first of all, the number one is I'm sure you've, you have prayed or you have put it in universe that you like to be aligned with divine will. Am I right? You're yes. Already, you're yes. Already put, you already put that out, correct? Yes, but somehow, but somehow my heart is not aligned. Okay. Right. So when you say your heart is not aligned, what do you mean by that? It is, I remember when I used to pray or when I pray and my heart, I, I, my heart is aligned, I get things immediately. Okay, so hold on a second. Let's just hold, hold on here. So now you want your heart to be aligned because you want to get what you want. Is that correct? Uh, not just what I want, I want to be me. Okay. Uh, what do you mean you want to be me? What is me? I want to be free. I want to be me. It feels like, well, I want my sovereign, sovereign, sovereignty. Uh -huh. It feels like something else, uh, a layer a shy, something, a layer prevents me, something. Right. So you're, you're capable of seeing a layer preventing you from becoming to be yourself, right? Yes. Okay. So, all right, just stay with me. So where is you, where is you seated that is aware of a layer preventing you? Where is this to you? um uh, thanks god now it is here uh, even a few years ago even i didn't have that it was kind of like removed probably but now it is here the only thing is something i don't know something somehow uh right okay just just hang in there you just said you are here yeah yes okay you just say you're here and you are seeing a layer 
preventing you from seeing yourself or being yourself? Yes, I think it's other people's layers, uh, which, uh, which has influence on me. Right, but, but in this other, in this, what you're explaining to me, there is still this awareness right now as we're speaking. I'm talking about right now, okay? Let's forget about other moments. Yes. Because there is no other moments, it's only right now. Yes. Because I don't know of anyone who can go into the past I, you know, I don't know if anyone can go to yesterday and come back or to last week. So I've never met someone yet in my life. So right now is the only thing I know, and I don't know if anyone else can go anywhere else. Yes. So let's hang on to what we got. So in here and now, right now, I want you to just take a look at yourself, the one who's talking to me. Okay? Yes. And tell me if there is anything wrong. Uh, in don't, don't, well, just, just hear what I say. All right? So don't bring anything from the past. I'm not talking about the past. I'm talking no. about right uh -huh. now in this moment. Yes. Take a look at yourself. Sink in. Sink inside. And tell me if there is anything wrong. Well, you see, I used to see myself as a company. Okay, hold on a second. Just one second. You're, okay. you're, you're going somewhere else again. I'm not Well, the reason is because I have to, I'm comparing it so for you to know. No, no, no. I don't want you to compare with anything because it doesn't matter what it used okay. to be. What, okay. what matters is what is right now. Okay. Right okay. now, right now, it yeah. feels like in my like uh like uh, uh, close to my heart chakra there is a dark layer which doesn't let me to be who i am doesn't okay. let me to be whole and complete okay so you're seeing a dark layer around your heart chakra that doesn't allow you to be complete right not around but uh on front on the front, right? You're seeing a dark layer in the front of your heart chakra that doesn't let you to be complete, correct? Okay. I'm just repeating what you said. You just let me know if it's yes or no. That's what I said. Okay, so where is this you? I want you to look at you, not your heart chakra or dark circle. Where is this you? Who is observing this phenomena? Look, look for that. Where is this you? Maybe somehow is afraid to shine or to show up. I don't no, know. no, no, you're, you're going to a story. I'm not talking about the story. I don't want to go to the future or past because when you say maybe it's afraid to shine, again, it's postponing something. I'm talking about right now in this moment, you are observing this phenomena. So where is this you? From where are you observing this thing? Your seat. Where are you seated right now that you can see this thing? Where is you? Well, as a soul, I no, can... I'm not talking about as of anything. Don't, don't attach anything to it. I'm talking directly to you. You're talking to me and I'm talking to you. So you talk to me directly. Where, where is your awareness? Where is this consciousness? Where is you right now in this moment that is aware of this other phenomena? Uh... I'm, um, I don't know how to say it. Well, where, where are you right now? I'm in the room. I understand, but you are here, correct, in this moment? I think so. I yeah. mean, yeah. So you're, you're in this moment present. 
in this very moment, right? Yes. Okay. In this very moment, detached from any previous moments or any future moments. I want you to stay detached from the past and the future right now. Take a look. Just bring your attention to yourself, the, the sense of being, the sense of presence that you have. Bring your attention to this. Oh. Okay, and so is it quiet or it's busy right now? Is there? It's quiet. Okay, it's quiet. Thank you. Stay, stay there because that's who you are. You come out of that place, then you're attaching a story. Then there yeah. is nothing to fix, but you just stay in this place. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Shishi, can you read to me what else we got here? Is there some questions? Okay. So, the mind likes to create all kinds of stories. It's, as I mentioned before, it's a projection. It's an addiction of the mind that is addicted to the story. So until you really start to consciously put your, divert your attention and really willing to take a look at it. And that's what self-awareness is. Self-realization, self-awareness. Self awakening your awakening awakening to what you know what or what are you what is self realization what are you realizing is until you're really willing to self observe your what is self observation even that word Self-observation. How can you observe yourself? Who is observing you? Where is that coming from? You know, I want you to contemplate and think about this till next time when we're having the next um, academy is your you're saying, for example, I got this dark thing in my heart chakra. There is this layer doesn't allow me to be myself. Well, from where do you see it? Who is seeing that? Because if there is something that doesn't allow you to be yourself, then you would never know it. You would not be yourself anymore. So if there is a level of awareness that there is something obscuring your, your view, well, it's not obscuring you. You're still aware of something in front of you. So you cannot be that thing. So it has no power over you. Its power is just imaginary. And its power is because you're identifying with something than yourself. Your attention is on the wrong place. Your attention is on the false. What you are not, not who you are. And that's what this work is about, is to divert your attention towards who you are which is the observer, which is the listener, the one who's listening, the one who is aware. 
self-aware. It's aware of itself. It's aware of the things come and go. It's, we can call it the sense of I am. It's the presence is here. Something is here that we call, you call it me. You are here, aware of whatever comes and goes. So this I am that is here and is aware of things come and go, what can happen to it? What can you do to it? What can you do that you are not? You're no longer I am and you I am not. Can you do something to yourself that you are not? Is it such a thing possible? that you are no longer it's do you understand what i'm saying i'm pointing out to this if you really understand what i'm saying and you get a glimpse of it immediately you can become free from the story that you believe defines who you are, the obstacles that you're imagining that obscuring your view of yourself, that they don't really exist. They're just thoughts or feelings. They're non-existing. And this imagination is keeping you in the prison that you're in. It's an imaginary prison. It's non-existing. It has nothing to do and cannot do anything to the truth of who you are. The sense of I am here right now. It doesn't matter what you feel because it's not the feelings. So if you feel something, that's not it. Or any kind of thoughts or any stories, it's aware of it but it's not it. And it's aware of the meat, of the presence of this body, but it's not it. It's simply aware of it. It's been observing the body movement, but it's not the body. And I'm talking about you, who you are, I am. So you're simply consciously make a practice of bringing your attention to the I am. Not I am a man, I'm a woman, I'm a mom, poor me, this happened to me, this I need to work on, this is holding me, blah, blah, blah. Just the awareness that is aware of a problem, not focused on the problem, but focused on the awareness, on the I am. And then you see that there's nothing, you're free. It's really not that difficult. Once somebody is directing you in this, in this way, 
when you have the, the right lead, you're being led in this direction, then you start to see it's really not difficult. It's just putting your attention. Where do I put my attention? So for thousands of years and all of your life, your attention is on the outside, including your thoughts and your emotions and your body and your story, your story, whatever is the story, and the world story. So all of your life, your attention has been on that. And now someone shows up in your life and says, okay, turn your attention inwards. Yeah, it's kind of weird in the beginning but it works because it's the truth and it's almost immediate so now you are not trying to accomplish something because that thing is already there you're unclutching from a lifetime wrong habit that's what you're doing you're unclutching from a wrong way of identifying or putting your attention on the wrong thing this thing that you're trying to change which is not working and it's not making you happy because your attention is on the wrong place bring your attention under the I am, and immediately you will experience that there is nothing, nothing needs to be changed. It's already perfect. So it's nice to have you all. Let's see what time it is. What time is it, Ms. Shishi? 11 12. Yeah, 11 12. So the uh, next event I have, I'm presenting at the Disclosure Fest this coming Saturday, downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I think my event is at 10 in the, in the morning. I'm not exactly sure. Is that the conscious? Um, Cosmic Consciousness Tent. Yeah, I'll be at the Cosmic Consciousness Tent. And that's where I'm presenting at 10 o'clock in the morning, Disclosure Fest. Uh, all the information is on my website, zarathustra.tv. And um, after that, I'll be heading to Sweden. I'm going, we're going to have uh, uh, my fourth annual fifth dimensional quantum healing and awareness training program. Um, one of my close friends, John Dumas, who is a wonderful shaman, uh, sound vibrational therapist. He's going to accompany us. So we're going to, uh, and I know some of you who are attending uh, the academy are going to be joining me. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you all and uh, looking forward to uh, the retreat in Sweden. Uh, our next academy is going to be next Tuesday, uh, same time, uh, 10 a.m. to 11.15 Pacific Standard Time and 19 to 20.15 uh, European Time. Uh, feel free to write your, if you have any questions or if you want to write to us, you can uh, write on the uh, academy page on Facebook or email it to us uh, however you're comfortable in communicating with us.
Anything I missed, Miss Chichi? No, that's all no? right. Yeah, okay. Um, look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, Hilda Hogan. Hi, Hilda. Are you there? Hi. Yeah, hi. Okay. Are you going to be around? Can I call you after after the academy? Yes, yeah, you can call me. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, FaceTime you or I uh, WhatsApp you. Yeah, yeah. Okie dokie. All right. Okie dokie. Well, nice seeing you all. Sending you lots of lo love and light. And just bring your attention to the source of yourself and all your problems will disappear immediately. Lots of love and light to all of you. Love you. <laughs>